The Bible isn't a history book. If it's not trying to record a literal idea of history, then what could it be trying to do? That's what we're going to explore on today's episode of The Living Philosophy. When you approach biblical scholarship, you immediately see that there's a lot of contradictions and the, the story doesn't exactly hold together in all its its details. And it proves to be quite inept then as, as a history book in the sense of its, its genealogies can be quite mixed up. And that's what we're going to explore today is a couple of genealogies in the New Testament. So there's genealogies of Jesus in two of the Gospels of the New Testament. So there's one in Matthew and there's one in Luke. And there's an important difference. So the first thing you'll notice is that there's different numbers of generations. There's completely different names. And where they end is also different. But you'll notice that there's these contradictions. And so it doesn't quite hold together as a historical story because the names disagree. But there's method in the madness. It's not like Matthew and Luke just came up with their own list of names. They were thinking about these things. They had a greater agenda or a greater thing going on. There's an overarching theme to their, to their gospels. This comes from a guy called Bart Ehrman who was, who grew up as a, as a, as a religious person and went in to study theology. Theology and I think he just at some point was like, whoa, what? And it kind of snapped him, snapped him out of, the, as, out of his faith. And he points out that th- these, these genealogies in Matthew and Luke are very different. And, but he, he, po- he goes into the reasons why they're different. He goes into the nature of their difference. So you'll find that in Matthew, he tells us, Matthew is the, the, the Jewish gospel writer. He sees Jesus as the, the long awaited savior, the Messiah of the Jewish people that they've been waiting for. And it's been foretold in different books of the Old Testament. Whereas Luke, on the other hand, is a, is more seeing Jesus as being for everyone in the world. Jesus is the savior of humanity, not just of the Jewish people. And so they've got that, keep that distinction in mind when you see where they end. So when you look at Matthew's genealogy, what you notice is that there's there's groups of 14 names. So I think it's there's 14 generations between Jesus and David and between David and Abraham. I think that's what it is. Maybe there's another grouping in the midst of that, but it's this ordered thing of like numbers going back through the, the the Jewish people, all the way back to Abraham, who had been the founder of the Jewish faith. So you can see how that matches up with Matthew's Jewish leaning, seeing Jesus as the Messiah of the Jewish people, that he's looking to assert that Jesus is the is the realization of Jewish prophecy, that he is the, the chosen one, he has arrived at this perfect time. And so it makes sense that for the, if even if the names of the genealogy disagree with with Luke's, it makes sense why there's this number of of names and that number of names, and why he stops at Abraham. Whereas if you look over at Luke's genealogy, it's very different. It's a it's a long list of names, but it goes all the way back to Adam. So you trace Jesus's genealogy through Abraham back to Adam. Then so it's you see that it's a, a longer list. But it, he doesn't stop at Abraham, which would connect him to all Jewish people. He stops at Adam, which connects him to all humans. He connects him to the entirety of humanity. And we see that Jesus is thus the, the savior of all humanity. And so I think this is the, this is a good approach to take to the Bible, to take to the holy text is, is to see it not as this literal history book. But once you release the idea that it's history, once you release the idea that it's literal, and you begin thinking, well, what is going on? Why, why are they contradictory? What, what is their, why, what decisions have they made within their text? And what are they trying to get at us? And so it's, it's, it's more fun almost to look at the Bible in this way, to, to, to think about it, reading it closer in that sense. Because reading it as history, it just tells you, you don't have to use that much imagination, but with this kind of approach, you have to get a little bit deeper. And Barth Ehrman's books are, are great. They're really interesting insights into, into, into faith. And, uh, yeah, it's everything that I wanted to share today. Just a little nugget about what might be different in the Bible. So if you've, if you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe. If you haven't already, give us a thumbs up down below. And, uh, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments if you have any thoughts, insights, or feedback. And otherwise, I shall see you next time. Thank you for watching.